Hey everyone, this is Jay. Today's video is a highly anticipated video about how to use my indicator. So first things first is how do you get the indicator? There's links to the indicator on TradingView I'm pretty much everywhere, all over the Discord, it's in my profile. Um, for the most part, it's posted on every stream, but some easy ways to find it would be in the Discord under the Jay's Indicator channel, or if you're on my YouTube, you can click links right here, which brings up a link tree. And it's right here, at Jay's Dream Suite, my free TV indicator. You click on that and it loads up the indicator on TradingView. Um, so once you load up the indicator, you're going to scroll down and you're going to hit add to favorites, this big blue button right here. Then you're going to go down to your trading view, go up to the top to indicators, and it should be one of the first ones up here that says plus J dream levels. And then you're just going to click and add that to your chart. So I'm going to have the settings for the indicator pulled up on the left side so we can go through them as we go through the chart together. For the most part, these settings should stay relatively the same um, throughout versions. Um, but you might see some slight tweaks here and there. I pretty much use the standard um, default settings on the indicators since those are pretty general settings for everyone. Um, however, there is some customization. The idea behind this indicator is that most of these indicators within it are not available for people with free trading views who are limited by maybe one or two indicators on their chart. As well as, I could not find anything on TradingView that came relatively close to um, a more streamlined, optimal version of seeing the very best levels possible. So that's why I made this. Um, so what this indicator is, is that it is a way to find the very best levels for trading. Trading is very simple in that it really is all about your levels. You know, if you're entering at the bottoms right here or shorting at the tops, then you don't really care about what's happening in between. You know, you're not sitting there with an abacus trying to judge the trend because you know you entered at the extreme. Right. So this is indicator is what's going to help you find these key levels. So firstly, let's get into it. So I have just added the indicator and now we're looking at the settings. Again, the settings are going to be over here on the left side. So first would be line style. So with our line style, there's two options here. We have standard and right anchored. Okay. Standard. These are going to be your standard lines or levels that go across the screen. Now, right anchored is what's actually my pride and joy here because right anchored means that all the levels, instead of going across the timeline, so like for example, these purple ones down here, which I'll make actually much brighter. So these levels are the key levels to be buying and selling at. And you can see that, you know, if we turned on actually one more historical for daily, you can see how well these lines are respected, um, you know, as support and resistance, right? Now determining which line is best is um, something that does take a little bit of practice that we can get into um, in another video, but we're not going to go through all of trading. This is primarily about the indicator at this point. So these are your daily um, pivot levels, the white ones, based on Fibonacci's numbers. And then the green and the purple um, are your weeklies and monthlies. So everything on here is custom, um, customizable. So your line style standard is what's going to stretch across the screen. If it's, you know, across the weekly time frame, then it'll go from the weekly to the weekly. Monthly will go from monthly to monthly, obviously, and then these are the dailies. Now, what I was saying is my pride and joy is that it's right anchored, meaning that all of these lines will be organized into one nice column over here. You know, that's something that I'm very proud of because I prefer to have a very clean chart, and that's not nothing I could find anywhere um, on TradingView. Next would be your text size. So this is a generalized text size across everything on the chart. Next would be the filter. This is also my pride and joy because you know one issue that you'll find with using any kind of levels indicator is, and I'll turn this off for a moment so you can see, this is the filter turned off. So these are all of the pivot levels that we have. The dailies, the weeklies, the monthlies. And you can see how unorganized this chart looks, right? It's very difficult to discern. It might be difficult to see things that are going on in the, in the candles or with the price action. But what I did was I made this filter again. Could not find this anywhere on TradingView. So if you turn the filter on, what it will do is it'll filter out the levels that are further away from the current price. This is um, a percentage. So you can change this percent. I think the default is seven or eight. And it will just show you within six or 7% of the current local price. Now I prefer right anchored, which means that our current chart is going to be very, very clean. Now, if you really wanted to see levels 
you know, that were far away, you know, you say you're looking, you know, much in advance, all you do is go into the settings and turn off the filter and you'll see all the levels imaginable. For the most part, those seven, eight percent is generally um, what I found to be pretty good. But again, just change it however you'd like. Now, the next is going to be filter bands. This is currently a work in progress. Um, what it will do is it will um, change the band color, which we'll get into based on how far away you are. Now, hide info is something that will hide the Discord info. So you see how there's a piece of cake down here and that will disappear and it will become the Discord link up at the top. So if you prefer to just have a little piece of cake down here, you can do that. Jellyfish mode is something that's super secret. Uh, I can't really talk about. It's currently under, um, um, I've submitted for a patent, so I'm waiting to hear back. But for anything in the entire indicator, there are these helpful little eye icons that you can mouse over that I've written, you know, kind of explanations for everything. Next would be the levels, the labels for themselves. So if we turn on the labels themselves, you can see the R1, R2, S1, S2. Um, for each of these, you know, the monthlies, turn them up a little bit bigger here. Um, and those officers, the police officers are not coming for me, hopefully. So we can see, you know, monthly resistance, weekly resistance, daily resistance or support. Price labels, these are going to be the actual prices themselves next to it. And you can position these on the left or the right of the price as well. Your line style, um, self-explanatory, if it's going to be lined, solid, dotted, or dashed. I prefer to have um, dotted. Because I think it makes the chart slightly more cleaner here. And then these are your daily pivots, weekly pivots, monthly pivots, which are all customizable to the color. Next is going to be your peaks, so your show tops and bottoms. Now what this will show are these triangles above and below the price section. So over here on the tops and bottoms, you can see these triangles that show up. Now what this is doing is this is indicating if you're making a higher low or lower high based on the specified length that you have. So 25 and 25 um, is going to be a little bit higher. So if we go to the 30 minute, for example, you can see that um, based on 25, 25, it's showing you when the peaks and the, the lows, if they're getting higher or lower. And this helps with market structure. So here we can see that we made a higher low compared to over here, because that's what this white triangle is. Orange triangle is showing that we made a lower high compared to over here. Then this triangle going down is showing we're making a lower low compared to over here. And this high has a lower triangle, so it's showing we're making a lower high, right? So this is partly helpful for determining structure and where we might be going next. Next are gonna be your trend lines. So you can see the, this is one of my favorite features are the automatic trend lines that are drawn. Again, everything's customizable. So the colors, um, you know, the time periods and everything. So right now we have Turn lines turned on and they're on green and red. So you can see these lines are automatically drawn for you. And the reason I really like this is because there's oftentimes trend lines you would never expect to find or to see. And so it really shows you things in a different way that you would never look for, I guess. I actually turned off extend just for this video, but I usually have extend lines on, which will extend them to the left and the right. And then you can always go back and see like, you know, just how far it goes back, if it connects to other points or whatnot. And see, like, look at, look at this one right here. This one's connecting. And then oftentimes you see the trend lines break, um, you know, right, right before you. All right. So that's the trend lines. Next is going to be your strategy. So for your strategy, each of these dots down here, um, shows you what it's for volume divergences. So if we turn these on and off, you'll see these red and green circles. So this is bullish divergence is this green dot and bearish divergence is this red dot. Anytime you have on balance volume divergences, the red dots and the green dots, these are kind of help you determine what's going on with the volume at this point. Next, we have the squares. So these are momentum divergences. So this is based on something called TSI. And there is um, my own addition of some volume added to this. And you see these at the very bottom. So this has to do with volume and price action, um, oftentimes called price volume trend. These green dots mean that it's bullish and the red dots mean that it's bearish. We'll try it out on different time frames. Let's see what you get. Obviously the higher time frames, the better. Next, we go to our next picture over here, left. Oh, and then lastly, we have our reversals, our SFPs here. These are gonna be the ice cubes and the fire. These are called swing fire patterns. A swing fire pattern 
is um, a change in market structure. So what happens is there's swing failure tops, swing failure bottoms, and this is just basic market structure. So if you're making a, you know, higher lows and higher highs like this, this is bullish, right? And I don't want to get too much into this, but this is just basic SFP uh, explanation. So when you finally come down, let's say you come back up again, making a higher low, but you make a lower high here. Well, that starts to be bearish if you're making lower highs. So the key is to see where you come down. Okay. If you come down and you fall below this line right here, that's called an SFP and that's bearish. Okay. But if you hold this line, then that remains bullish. So this is good swing pattern. Okay. All this is good swing pattern, but it's when you break below this line, that's called an SFP or swing failure pattern. Okay. That means you might have a break in structure and you can come up and you can short at the next lower high. Okay. There's a um, good picture in the discord under patterns that shows SFPs. Um, however, I did add them to the indicator. So you can see when they're happening with the ice and the fire. So these are helpful for determining, um, you know, change in direction of the price. Next is going to be your view ops. So view ops are volume weighted, um, you know, price movement. And that's what these green and blue bands are. These are highly, highly underestimated and undervalued and under everything. The way these view ops band, bands work is that in a few different ways. So they're moving relative to the volume and the price action. And how you use them is when you have price touch in either band, that is a good time to see a reversal, a good time to look for an entry. And you can see I turned them on a history of them going way back so we can really see it on this chart over here. You can see that whenever price hits one of these bands, it goes the opposite direction, right? Or there's a high chance of a reversal. You know, here it did get up to the top of the band, but it came back down, hit the top of the band, came back down, hit, you know, so all of these are good shorts, right? Anytime you have a touch in the band, that's an extreme. That's a good time to look for an entry. The other way to use these bands is to look for the squeeze. You can see that whenever the bands contract, that's likely time that there's gonna be a squeeze or a move gonna happen. So let's take a look. So you can see the bands are quite wide here and then they contract here and you can expect a move to happen. Bands are contracting right here. They're very contracted. And that's when we had a squeeze down. Finally, the bands came back together. They got really contracted right here and we had a squeeze down. Bands are very wide in this area as we're kind of consolidating. Bands contracted right here. We're expecting a big move at any point. They got even more contracted right here. You can see we squeeze down, right? So that's another way to use them is to look for when the bands are squeezing. Um, you can expect a big price movement to happen, either up or down, depending on you know what you're looking at. Now, so these bands are good for support and resistance, but also for seeing when potential price action is going to occur. These bands are consistent across all time frames. You know, you're going to see the same band placement um, if you're looking at the one hour, eight hour, or even five minute. These bands will also hide on the one day um, to keep the chart clean. And I'm thinking about adding them so they also hide on the eight hour and 12 hour. So I'm still working on that. There are actually bands inside of these, which I'll show. So if we scroll down, we turn off only outer bands. There is another band inside of this right here. And again, these bands, one thing I did forget to mention was that these bands are based on Fibonacci's numbers. So I believe that the top band, these are my own calculations, but I believe the top band um, has to do with the, the golden zone. And I believe this is um, a form of a 382 in here. I don't have to check again. Um, but all this was a lot of back testing to get these bands this uh, fairly accurate. Next, we have um, this VWAP in here. You can see how it kind of acts as support and resistance. And we're going to talk about this in the candle colors for determining, you know, if a coin looks bullish or bearish, this is one tool you can use. You can see that the VWAP actually changes colors if you're above or below it. So if you're below the VWAP band, it's blue. And if you're above it, it's green. Now the VWAP time frame, um, I wanted something that was rolling so that it would not change um, or be anchored. So if we go down here, we can actually change it to um, whatever we want. So we can actually change it to the daily. And you're gonna see these VWAP bands get much tighter because now they're anchored more towards the daily time frame. Again, still you know very accurate, but it's all about you know how soon you want to trade. Um, how you know if you're just looking for a quick flip, um, looking for like an intraday trade. Um, you know the monthly is also quite good. 
but I primarily would keep it on the, um, the weekly. Next are going to be our candle colors. So our candle colors, these are going to be the colors that are showing up on the chart. You can turn these on and off just like everything else in the indicator. One thing is that if your candle colors are kind of flickering, the first thing to do is to come up here and click on the indicator itself. Go to visual order and click bring to front. So that'll make it so it doesn't really flicker at all. The candles won't change colors. Now you have some cool options here and there's actually a few in the works right now of being added. The first one is going to be your Z score. This is based on volume. You have volume candles as well and you can see that the candle colors are going to be more anchored towards um, the volume here if it's going up or down or if it's getting uh, if it's increasing or decreasing. So just because it becomes blue here doesn't mean that the volume is going down. What it means is that the volume is not as increasing as before. So when we talk about um, things like Delta, right? If we look at this chart, you know, volume here is increasing. The rate is increasing in this area, right? So you have an increase in your Delta volume here, but here volume is not increasing as much, right? Volume is still going up, right? So you have an increased V, but you might have a, you know, a negative Delta V, which means that the volume is not increasing as much. The rate is slower. So that's one way to think about these volume candles is that it doesn't mean the volume necessarily going down. It means that it's not as increasing as much. And that's looks like that's what happened here, right? Next would be the VWAP candles that I really want to show. So these VWAP candles, you can actually use to determine if a coin is bullish or bearish, depending on if it's a trading above or below the VWAP. This is helpful for when you're looking at multiple coins kind of going through them. Um, and if you're using a, kind of like a lower time frame VWAP um, as well, like a daily. So this is kind of helpful to see if a coin's bullish or bearish. Next over here, and again, you can customize the time frame of these, so play around with it. Next are going to be your sessions. So sessions are going to be like your New York, your London, and your Asia. You can turn these on and off over here. The first option is if you just turn them on and you don't click show squares, is you're going to have these letters up at the very top. Asia, London, and, and New York. And this shows you the time of each session starting. So if you really wanted to trade, you know, the Asia session, here we have the Asia session starting right here. And you can see what happened, you know, as it went up. Again, same thing here, Asia session opened. And we went up quite a bit here. If you click on show squares, this will actually show you the the squares going across the screen for each session for when they open and then they close. So the New York opens right here and closes right here. Um, you can also change the cha uh, change the location. So if you want it at the top or the bottom. Next is going to be your performance table. This is something that's also highly um, underused and underappreciated. So this performance table, which you can actually choose the text size on it and choose the location. So top right, bottom left, and you can choose the index. So what this table is showing here is that it's showing the current price of the current coin you're looking at. So the first one is going to be BTC. It shows how it's performed the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. Next is going to be the index price, how this does versus the index. So the index down here, you can choose whatever comparison you want. So right now I think the default is the crypto market itself. So total. And what this does is this compares this coin relative to the entire crypto market. This is very helpful to see if a coin is actually um, overperforming or underperforming the entire market. And this is vital to really getting um, a good sense and relative, you know, value of a coin because some of these coins look very good, but then when you look at them and they're underperforming the entire market, you know, it's like, oh, okay, maybe this coin's not so good to buy right now. You know, if it's constantly underperforming the market. So down here we have the versus the index. So this is how this coin's done relative to the entire crypto market. So while Bitcoin is up 0.9% on the day, it's only up 0.5% relative to the entire market. So it's actually underperformed the market on the daily and the weekly and the monthly. So that means that some of these other coins might be better, you know, better value right now. So if we let's, let's look at another coin like um, Adam. So for Adam, Adam's held up pretty well, you know, despite all these dumps. Um, you know, it is up quite a bit, but it's actually still underperforming the market, um, as it hasn't really just kind of stayed sideways, I guess. So something to use um, it's in your arsenal. At the bottom, we have the RSI. I prefer to have this down at the bottom left, though. 
kind of out of the way. And I think that's it guys. So and girls, so um, if there's any questions, please feel free. Um, you know, this indicator will change throughout time, uh, you know, slowly, but for the most part, things should stay the same. Um, lastly, if you do want to update the indicator, because I do um, post updates to the discord, but when I update it, what you're going to do is you're going to remove the indicator like this. You're going to hit the X right here, remove up here in the top, right? You're going to hit this button right here to save on it. Okay. You're going to click that and then you're going to refresh your page and then go back up to indicators and re-add it. That is how you update an indicator on TradingView. I know it's a bit weird, but that's, um, that's how they have things at the moment. Lastly, I would recommend watching my TradingView settings video because a lot of that is key to maximizing how your TradingView looks. And especially using this indicator, there are some very key things um, to making the indicator work much smoother and better, like turning off all of your margins, um, for example, um, to really maximizing your screen real estate. Anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, I think that's it. All right, thanks.